Hey, how's it going? My name is Tin La and welcome to the channel. Uh, I'm in the progress of uh, building a gantry for a Vaughn 2 3D printer machine. And in this video, I'm going to let you know my insight uh, of how building one. I'm not going to show you exactly how to build one because there's an instruction manual or assembly manual that you can read it through and follow it. And, you know, and there are so many online videos showing you how to build one by one, piece by piece. That's not in this video. You're not going to find that information in this video, but I'm going to show you uh, my insight, my input of putting it together. All right. So first thing first, um, I built my frame on a calibrated surface plate. I'm no pretty sure for the fact that they are square and and straight and whatnot, you know. And you can see in this video, uh, I built it uh, at my workplace, but at home I don't have access to uh, surface plate, so I built it on my class table uh, in my living room. So <clears throat> I did have I did do what I have, all right. But don't assume that any class table is flat, okay. So let me show you, uh, as you can see here, I got a dial test indicator that's sitting on the magnet base in one, two, three square flop. And at one point, I'm gonna swing it around. And you can see, I don't, I don't know if you can see it from there, but it's it's bowing uh, down like this at this point. But over here at this point, it was squaring up straight again at one zero. So I marked two locations, uh, this spot and this spot at zero. So they are relative to each other, pretty flat to each other. And by doing that, I know for the fact that these points are relative flat uh, to each other, okay? So so I'm gonna base on these two points and then maybe some another point over here so I can measure, I can square my, my, my gantry. Um, okay, so this is the X gantry. Um, so I built it like this. So the top one is going to be here. That's why you see two uh, T5 nuts in there and then one T5 nuts at the bottom. So the top one has two. So that's a point. And if I leave my X member beam like this, at these two points, I should install this linear rail parallel to the frame. By doing that, I use like roller pins sitting at this point and, and another roller pin, the dowel pins. Uh, sitting at these two points. So at these two points, as, as I said earlier, so they are flat, they are flat, and I know the beam is also flat. Um, so now this linear rail should be flat from this point to this point. I, I want this linear rail to be as, as straight as possible. I don't want them sitting crooked with the beam member like that, you know? I mean, there are like a tool that you can print it out, but I, I don't really rely on that much. So if I, if I at this point, I use my dial test indicator on this point. So I set it zero and I spin it around and, oops, the weight, okay. All right, if I set the dial test indicator over here and set it at any number that you can, let's say number five right here, and I spin it around and it should show number five on this side. I mean, you know, two or three tau uh, off, which is okay. I mean, it's accepted tolerance or not. Otherwise you can fix it. You can uh, get this one high up 2,000, 2,000 of an inch. Um, it's like 50 microns. Uh, if that acceptable to you, that's fine. Otherwise you can fix it until because you know this one flat, you know this one flat relative to each other. And sitting on this roll of pins or dowel pins, um, and this member should sit flat to each other. From this point, using dial test indicator. Okay, so at this point, it's about seven and a half number. It's relative to each other. I, it doesn't really matter at what number, but if I spin it around, and check for the other size of the linear rail, I should get number six and a half. So the difference is uh, uh, 1,000 of an inch uh, difference. So if within acceptable tolerance, uh, you know, uh, I'm willing to sacrifice. Uh, okay, so now I got it really like parallel to the beam member. Uh, that's, that's important for the X rail, okay? 
So that's how I install my linear rails on the Y axis, uh, as you can see over there on the Y axis. Uh, for both of them, similarly, this fashion, you know, and um, I just want to make sure that the linear rail is parallel to the, uh, the frame member, the extrusion member. Once I got that established, all the um, linear rails built together, just like similar fashion, uh, I built my X, uh, axis uh, first. When you, when you build these uh, 3D printed part, make sure that, that this is uh, flush with each other. You don't want the part that's sitting like higher, one part is sitting higher, one part is sitting lower. Similar to this uh, as well. Make sure that this distance and from this distance are uh, pretty much similar to each other, okay? Flush to each other, okay? You don't want them sitting one high up and one high down. What it means is that if you have that problem, your gantry will be sitting like this and you have one lower side and one higher side when your two head moving like back and forth on the X axis like this, you know? Just like that. You don't want that uh, problem. So make sure that these things are flush with each other and this thing is equal to each other. Okay, so that's my second tip. And when you put it in, just like so, and as I said, two T-nuts on the top, you put it like this. Oops, I'm wrong, see I'm wrong over there. Maybe these two nuts like that, these two nuts like that, okay? And when you put them, the way I put them, I put it like this, all right? And I use my one, two, three block sitting square to my flat table, relative flat, uh, glass table, okay? And then I press it against like that. Let me turn it around so you can see it easily. So you can see. So I got this sitting like this. And it's pretty much sitting flat to the table at these two points, relative flat to each other like this. I see no rocking. And when I put the side joints together, I make sure that I got it square before I tighten the bottom screw first. Because what I do is that I tighten the bottom screw and push the linear rail flush to this surface of your 3D printed part. All right, put it together like that. And I hold it uh, so tight to make sure that this is perpendicular to this, this surface, right? At this point, at these two points, relative flat. And then I tighten the screw. I think that it's uh, M5 30, I believe. Uh, don't call me on that. Uh, so look at the instruction manual. You, you better get in better information from there, but uh, yeah. A screwdriver so I install them like I install it like this push the linear rail against the 3d printer part and make sure that this you see this one sometimes I crook it like that and make sure I put it straight and then I tighten the screw make sure the beam member sit flush I mean if you need somebody help with you to push it together like that you know it may be easier so now I have this one perpendicular to the bottom surface, similar to this one. I tight the bottom first because I want to make sure that this one push it down to the bottom uh, surface of this 3D printed part. Okay. Make sure this this one square to the block and push it together like that and then tight see when you tight sometimes it lift it up make sure that it it's perpendicular to that one two three block Perpendicular to that. Yep. 
perfect so that's it for the videos and uh, i hope you like it you learned something along the way i mean yeah give a thumb up guys uh, if you like the videos and i'll see you in the next video okay bye remember get one of these two dial test indicator okay it's so useful